we've been listening to uh, a very interesting uh, talk from Dr. Carroll, Dr. Seth Carroll. Uh, he was talking about genetic risk factors for osteonecrosis in children with ALL, and age was a factor, and the age of 10 years was the issue. What was the big story there? So it's very interesting. So it's well known, uh, unfortunately, that young adults, young teenagers actually, have the highest risk of any population for osteonecrosis. And it's probably because of the developing and rapidly growing bone at that age that particularly sensitive to toxic agents. And variants that are predisposed to osteonecrosis have previously been identified in that age group. But one of the things that this group did was really focus focus in on osteonecrosis in children under the age of 10 years. And what they found was um, that they identified using a very, very large population of patients and a very unbiased approach using large genome sequencing of SNP, using SNP arrays. Uh, they identified a number of variants that were associated with specific genes particularly in the younger children, they also looked in the older children, the young adults, that were associated with bone development, potentially, and fat development what within is the, the bone. The, the big story coming out of this, uh, things like glutamate receptor signaling was mentioned, and also adipogenesis. Right. Uh, so uh, so what, what, what for you is the big Well, big I think conclusion? that the big thing is that the, the types of predisposition factors, potentially, to the to the osteonecrosis problem may differ in younger versus older children. And that the ones in younger children may have to do a lot with intrinsic bone formation. Uh, whereas the ones in older children potentially have to do more with vascular supply to the bone. And so I think that those are two of the differences. Also these variants that were described are brand new variants that have never previously been described and uh, give you some idea of things that potentially could be used to modulate that problem in the population of patients yeah. that has inherited those risk factors yeah. as predisposing factors to osteonecrosis. And the take home for you for clinicians from this would be what? I think that the take home message is that there, uh, as we are allowed to screen and identify risk variants, we're going to be able to more carefully identify patients who are at risk for these very severe complications of our very successful treatments and that perhaps knowing these things in advance may allow us to modulate treatment in the future to avoid the complications of osteonecrosis. Most importantly, it also gives us ideas about how therapeutically, since the drugs that we use are very important for the treatment, how we might, based on the genetic information that we've obtained, use things to inhibit the process that was identified by the aberrant genes that are involved in the development of these problems in the bone.